reported is that Danny Ferry is expected to take the helm in New Orleans. So I want to ask you, first and foremost, Grant, what you think about this hire. You know, well, Danny Ferry, you know, obviously he's been around the game. Uh, his father was a general manager, um, you know, obviously played in the, in the NBA, was in the Atlanta Hawks. Um, you know, there was a, a situation that occurred and, and, and obviously uh, uh, enough time, I guess, has elapsed where New Orleans felt like, you know, it was time to bring him in. Uh, but, you know, I, I think, first of all, just sort of processing the firing, you know, I, I, I'm questioning whether it was it the mishandling of uh, Anthony Davis and his trade demands or was it sort of just the complete body of work during Dempsey's reign where, you know, I guess your best player in franchise hi history asking to be traded after six years uh, maybe warrants this. But uh, it's a tough situation. I think Dempsey uh, did a good job and uh, and obviously we moved on and it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. But, but Ferry has done well and has had a track record in the past and, uh, you know, it, it's an interesting situation to inherit. Uh, but I am surprised by this. And that's an interesting and really excellent point that it could perhaps come in the wake of this Anthony Davis situation, but could also be the reality that you've had this franchise player in place. You've had time to build a winning team around him. You had an opportunity to keep a guy like DeMarcus Cousins in town and chose not to. Do you see it more so as a move in the wake of the AD situation being botched the way that it was? Or do you think that it's perhaps over the entirety of the body of work. So, so Candace and I were talking about this, and I'm, 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 I'm going to borrow from a couple of your points. Um, you know, and, and I guess the confusing thing for, for all of us kind of watching this, you know, is that, you know, we, we assume that management and ownership were all on the same page, and that's what they were saying about how they wanted to treat this Davis situation. Um, somewhere in between, after the trade deadline, management and ownership are not on the same page. And if you're going to replace Dale Dimps with, with Danny Ferry, who was on the management team, right, then was he not, was, was Ferry not for the decision? Mm. Or, or, you know, yeah. I mean, you, 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 can't, you can't say, right. you, you can't say if Grant and I are working together, right, right. And, and I leave, but you stay, so were you not with me? <laughs> no, which is uh, a problem in itself. Yeah, right. which is a problem in itself, which, yeah. which, which kind of would, would, would say, okay, would suggest that internally within the management team, there had to be some, something going on internally within the management team yeah. to make ownership say, you're gone, but you can stay. So, Candace, what do you see as the best case scenario, not just for Anthony Davis moving forward, but for the Pelicans as a franchise? Well, I think the NBA made it clear that sitting Anthony Davis was not an option with, you know, they're obviously, they're going to find the Pelicans for sitting him. But the best situation right now, you know, obviously you can't trade him now. You have to wait till the summer. But we were speaking about this as well. One person that's not going to mess up a trade is going to be Danny H. <laughs> He's not one of those people that's going to over give or give you more than you deserve. So was the Lakers offer the best offer that they're possibly going to get? Probably. Uh, I think you look to get a high draft pick. I don't know whether you part ways with some of the guys that you have. Julius Randle, to me, is one of those up and coming mm -hmm. players that I don't know if I would part ways with right now. I think he's still young and still able to develop. Um, and I think you go from there. I, I, I was really surprised with this firing because I think like what you said, a united front is usually what happens. Management as well as ownership usually is on the same page. And that just didn't happen, apparently. And it'll be interesting to see, too, Candace, what direction they take. Do they try to quickly rebuild, keep a Julius Randle, Drew yep. Holiday, maybe do a trade with one of these teams and now sort of still be in the, the playoff picture, if you will? Or do they try to blow things up and kind of start all over again? And, and, and that remains to be seen. But I do think Boston, I think L.A., I think there'll be other teams that maybe we're not thinking about right now that will, will really try to, you know, go after a once-in-a-lifetime player. And you, you got to kind of see how things play out. Teams have expectations. Teams may not reach them. Uh, and, and teams have assets that they can, that they can you know, use to go after them. So I, I do think there'll be other teams that emerge. But I think right now the favorites have to be L.A. and Boston. Do you think, though, that as Candace mentioned, that the best offer they were going to get for A.D. has already come and gone? 
I, I don't know. I mean, I think it depends on what exactly they're trying to accomplish. They have to have lost leverage at this point, though, right? Because the Lakers at this point, if they come back with another trade offer this summer for Anthony Davis, it's not going to look the same as it did to get him before the trade deadline, knowing that you can get him as a free agent next season. So I, I would say it's up to whoever the new manager is going to be. Uh, he or she, right? He or she, and if, and if it's Danny Ferry, right, he, he's got to somehow say, okay, how can I get back on the same page with Anthony Davis? There's got to be some type of communication that happens between Davis his representatives in the organization to see if there's some way that we can get through these next 25, 27 games without it being so chaotic. So Alvin Gentry can have a chance to continue to coach and develop. And then you got to come up with a game plan. What is it that we're trying to do moving forward? Are we trying to rebuild, you know, or are we trying to get this type of asset for our team, this type of player for our team? What type of team we're trying to build? And is Alvin Gentry still going to be our coach? So there are a lot of questions that, that are yet to be answered, and it all depends on the next person that's sitting in that chair. He or she will have the answers. But now, because of the way it was so publicly handled through the media, through the Pelicans organization, the Lakers organization, Anthony Davis himself, and Anthony Davis's representation, we now know that not only does he want to be traded, he wants to play for the Lakers. So you would imagine that any other team that does have assets to give up, as we've mentioned the Boston Celtics so many times, would give up less knowing that you're getting a one-year rental. Well, that's the thing.